Let's give Jesus a hand this morning. Amen. Let's go to Zechariah, 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 however you want to say it. Chapter 3. Page 1252. I want to say something before I start. Um, I love this church. And I love the people in this church. We have some great... Um, great people here, I think the greatest, and um, it's a privilege to come together, and when you're not present, you are missed, you are missed. God has given me something today to give to the people today, and he brought a few scriptures back to my remembrance, we're going to start in Zechariah 3. And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 7. But can we pray first? Will you, will you stretch your hands this way? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, that at the entrance of your word, there is light and understanding. And we pray, God, for an opening for the word, Jesus, to walk into this room right now and speak the words as if he would speak them. Through these lips, I surrender and I ask your anointing, God, to break every bondage, to lift every burden, to make us free indeed, no doubt about it, today. Give us a word that will sustain us today, God, in every season of our life, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you can stand, stand, we'll read this together, and then we'll sit down. We're just going to do things a little bit different today. A little bit different today. I'm reading in the New King James Version. Zechariah 3, 1, it says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. How I many knows there's a difference between when you rebuke the devil and when the Lord rebukes the devil? The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand? plucked from the fire. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. Someone say, take away. Come on, say, we take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 7. 2 Corinthians 7. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1 says this, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that when the accuser walks in, that you rebuke him in our behalf. That we can divinely walk boldly today without shame into your presence. And we give you thanks for the reading of your word in Jesus' name. Hook somebody next to you and tell them I'm so glad you're here. And you may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. 
Paul says in 2 Corinthians 7, he says, Therefore, since we have these promises, what promises is he speaking of? Well, if you read the chapter before, you may hear about a God who is always with us. You may hear about a God who accepts us. You will hear about a God who is a father to us. Pastor May talked about on Wednesday about how our God has made us a new creation. Amen. He's made us something new. You know, there's a difference between when God creates something and when He makes something. If you make something, you take of what is there and you make something out of it. You take mud and you make bricks. But if you create something, you take something out of nothing and make something new. And God said when He made us a new creation that He didn't just take something old to peace and put back together, but God said He breathed something new into His people. Amen. And He has made us alive unto God. How many has been made alive unto God? He breathed in you and made us a living soul. Thank you for that. So since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Someone say, I got to cleanse myself. We live in a church who is always looking to fix somebody else. But somebody say, this word is for me today. Cleanse yourself. Inspect yourself. Look into yourself, your own soul, your own spirit. Quit looking at your wife. Quit looking at your children and your parents and those that are around you and your work. God says here through Paul, because we have such a promise, we need to worry about cleansing ourselves. From what? From the filthiness of the flesh and the filthiness of the spirit. He distincts and makes a distinction here between the filthiness in the Greek is immor immorality and impurity and sin. From, from the immoral filthiness of your flesh and the filthiness of the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god someone say process paul says this is a journey this is this is something we perfect along the way this is something we we wash ourselves like with the washing of the water of the word and it's a ongoing thing Cleanse ourselves. So the filthiness of the flesh. Let's talk about that for a moment because the filthiness of the flesh speaks of the filthiness that you see. It talks about the filthiness that is obvious. It talks about the outward sin that everyone can see. The filthiness of the flesh, the outward man. It's the man Paul wrestled with. And said, who can save me from this body of death? It's the man we are told to crucify, yet we feed it and keep it alive. It's the filthiness that everyone sees. It's evident to all. Everyone saw what you did. And everyone heard what you said. It's the manifested transgression and sin you committed. Who does she think she is? Look at her praising God that way. Who does she think she is? Do you know what she did last night? Do you know? Did you hear about what she did? Listen, they saw this filthiness of the flesh. They saw the affair you may have been through. They saw the addiction in action and the alcoholism that destroyed your family. Listen to me. They know the abuse and the molestation you encountered they saw the sin bloom into divorce that devastated your childhood and your children they know where you were last night they saw that drink that you drank they saw that smoke that you smoked they heard you speak that now you carry your past on your back like a weight it's there to remind you every day how you missed it, 
how you messed up, how you failed. The enemy's always there. The accuser's always there to say, you messed up. Your time has passed. You can't recover. So now you've just shut down, paralyzed by your past. Not able to reach forward because of the weight of the sin. The preacher says to press on, but the devil says to you, you're a failure. You're not worthy. Everyone around you seems to point the finger. I said everyone around you seems to point the finger instead of lending a hand. They expose your failures and push you down with whispers instead of lifting you up and pulling you up to where you belong. So you come to the place where you just let that condemnation shut you down. Paralyzed by your past, you just sit down, holding on, holding on to that filthiness of the flesh. Then there's the filthiness of the spirit. The filthiness of the spirit, the filthiness of the mind. The filthiness that's invisible. This is the pretender. On the outside, all seems to be right with God. Listen, you praise and shout the loudest. You talk the talk. And you seem to walk the walk. You wear the mask of religion and fool people, but not God. You have that critical spirit. You're the finger pointer, pointer, yet inwardly you're wretched. It's that invisible iniquity that has your mind bent and twisted toward immoral desires and secret sin. It's the filthiness of the mind that carries you away. At your computer, when you're watching TV, when you're alone late at night. It's the filthiness you fight at night when no one's around. That lustful thought you can't shake. Jesus spoke of you when he said that when you look upon a woman to lust, it's the same as committing adultery. It's that quiet anger. Listen to me. It's that quiet anger and silent frustration. It has you unhappy with your life. It has you unhappy with your job. It has you unhappy with your spouse. It's telling you to cheat. It's premeditated sin that will manifest in due time. If someone asks you how you're doing, you would say, like Dennis, I'm blessed and highly favored. But inwardly, you're full of pain. That invisible pain that breeds bitterness has been swept under the rug. Outwardly, you seem righteous. Outwardly, you seem like everything is just okay. Outwardly, everyone thinks that you just are the most supersonic Christian on the planet. But inwardly, if we could take a look into your heart, if we could take a look into your mind, if we could reach in, we would find this filthiness on the inside. And the enemy is always there to condemn you and say you're not worthy. You can't do what God's called you to do because your thoughts are not his thoughts. Your mind is twisted. You even thought you were over it, but the test showed you it was still in there. You thought you had forgiven them, but then they came around you and you felt hate enter your heart. The storm brought it all to the surface, and now you're reliving the hate the anger, the pain, the addiction, the brokenness. 
Now you just begin to accept that this is how it's always going to be. Maybe this is how it's always going to feel. The enemy tells you you'll never be truly free. I know the enemy don't talk to you like that, but the enemy speaks in your ear and whispers at night and says you'll never be free. You're always going to deal with this. You're not really saved. You're not worthy. So you just give in and give up. It's what Paul says that we must cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and the filthiness of the spirit. But like Zechariah said in chapter 3, despite all of that, despite the filthy garments, he sees Joshua the high priest, he sees Joshua the high priest standing in the presence of God. How many can say with me today that even though that you've messed up sometimes and you have things you're wrestling with, even now in your flesh and in your spirit, that despite all of that, that you're still here today standing in the presence of God. Still standing, still standing, still pressing, still fighting, still believing. Come on, do I have any people that are still believing? The fact that you're struggling is an indicator that you haven't been conquered yet. And God says, as you stand in His presence, you're about to receive something from the Lord that you never had before. Listen to me. As you stand in the presence of the Lord, you're getting ready to receive something that you've never had before. There's about to be an exchange in the presence of of the Lord. The accuser, I I want you to know this, the accuser that is condemning you and speaking in your life is about to flee because God is about to rebuke him out of your presence. The one that says you're not good enough. The one that says you're not going to be able to do it. God is getting ready to rebuke him and he's going to flee. Do I have any Joshua's that are still standing in the presence of God? Won't you stand up right now? If you're still standing, come on, someone give him a praise right now and say, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. And there's about to be an exchange. There's about to be an exchange. There's about to be an exchange, Holy Ghost. There's about to be an exchange. There's about to be an exchange, Holy Spirit. There's about to be an exchange. The Lord rebukes Satan and he shut his mouth. He has nothing else to say. And then the Lord starts talking and says, Isn't this the one like a brand that I plucked out of the fire? Is it the one? This is the one. He's not ashes. He's not burning, but he's a brand plucked out of the fire. The brand there is a a burnt, charred log. It's where the fire used to be. It's where the fire used to burn, but it's no longer burning. You're not ashes yet. You haven't totally been uh, smoldering down to ashes, but you're no longer burning for God like you used to. But God says, isn't this the one that like a brand I plucked out of the fire? Some of you have been through some stuff. Some of you have been through some tests. Some of you have been marred and charred and burnt and fragmented and divided in your family and you've been going through all this fiery trial but God says because of that I've plucked you out for such a time as this and because of that that you went through it qualified you for what I'm getting ready to put on you because I'm getting ready to remove the filthy garments that have been hanging on your life and I'm getting ready to place a new mantle and I'm getting ready to place a new garment on you Hallelujah, in my presence. Someone say it's in his presence. Come on, someone say it's in his presence. Come on, someone say I'm ready for an exchange. Come on, say I'm ready for an exchange. Hallelujah. He says he deals with the filthiness of the spirit, the things that nobody else could see. The things that you struggle with that nobody else knew about. He says, I deal with it and I give you a new garment. I exchange the filthiness of the spirit for the garment that comes from God. Oh, come on. Thank him for that.
You've been ostracized. You've been talked about. Everybody saw your mistakes. Everybody saw your failures. Everybody knew you came up short. Everybody saw the divorce and saw what happened to you. And the devil said that you will never be anointed. The devil said that you'll never be able to do what God called you to do. But today God is stripping you of your past. He's stripping you of the filthy garment that everybody has been lying about and saying that's who you are. God said that's not who you are. You're a priest in my house. You're a king in my house. And today God is doing a divine exchange for you if you'll just receive it right now in his presence. Hallelujah. He's trading hallelujah your sorrow for joy he's putting on a garment hallelujah a praise for the spirit of heaviness hallelujah for what you've been through god says i'm raising you up for such a time as this hallelujah with an anointing that will destroy the yokes of bondage off this generation somebody give the lord praise hallelujah somebody give the lord praise come on somebody give the lord praise Somebody give the Lord praise. He says, I love you even though you messed up. I love you even though you don't think right. I love you. So we've got this group that always will point and say, look what you did. And then we've got these folks that have all this inward stuff that if people could only see what you thought, they would run and flee. The moral of this message today, listen to me, is that we all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. This church is not a place of perfection. It's a hospital for the sick. It's a hospital for the fragmented. It's a place for the people that are, the people that need Jesus to find Jesus, to find hope, to find refuge. And we thank you for that right now. I want everybody to join them at the front. If you feel that this spoke to your heart today, come to the front and stand with them. Hallelujah. Stand up here at the front with them. You were plucked out of the fire for such a time as this. You were plucked out of the fire for such a time as this. The devil is a liar that's been speaking in your ear. God says to remind some people here today of your original call. Your original call that God placed in your heart and in your life. And through life, it's been tainted. It's been drowned out by the noise of failure, by the noise of bad relationships. By the noise of maybe bad decisions. But he is here to heal you today. He is here to heal you. To restore you. And bring you to the rightful place that you belong. And like Jonah, you're going to make a three days journey in one day. Lift your hands and receive this right now. The presence of the Lord is here. You've been plucked out of the fire. Let's just give it to him right now. I'm believing God that there's going to be a supernatural exchange right now in his presence. We all need you, Jesus. We always don't think right. We always don't talk right. We always don't act right. This isn't behavior modification day, but this is a supernatural time in the presence of God where God is getting ready to rebuke the accuser that's been speaking in your ear, condemning you, making you think that you can't be what God's called you to be. The devil is a liar. You're going to do everything that God has called you to do. Someone say, I am what God says I am. Come on, say it like you mean it. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. The devil is a liar. Come on, he's reminding me of my past. He's telling me how much of a failure I am and all the things. But God says, I forgot your past. Now you need to forget it because I'm thrusting you into it today and to what I have for you today and to tomorrow. 
We receive it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We let go. We let go. We let go. We let go. Put your arms around somebody next to you if, it, if you can and just begin to pray for one another right now because the enemy uses stuff like this to divide us and we all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. I don't care how perfect you think you are, you're not. We need Jesus. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, oh, healing rain is falling down, healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, oh, your healing rain is falling down, healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. Your healing rain is falling down. Jesus, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Your healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Standing in his presence. So unworthy, yet he loves us, yet he forgives us. Jesus, the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. That means he took on an outward wound to take care of outward sin. But it says he was bruised for our iniquities. A bruise is bleeding on the inside. Iniquity is something you don't see. It's uh, bent and twisted towards certain desires. You can be born into iniquity. And the enemy never will fight you on the areas that you're not drawn to, but he will fight you in those areas you're bent and twisted to. But Jesus says, I not only took an outer wound for an outer manifestation of sin, but he says, I bled on the inside I was bruised on the, and I bled on the inside to take care of all those things that nobody sees, all the pains that nobody knows, all the hurts that nobody knows. You put on a smile, but inwardly you're broken. All those struggles with lust and different things. God says, I bled for that too, that I, that I was bruised for that. 
And you can have true freedom. You can have true freedom. God, I just ask as everyone stands here at the front that we would cleanse ourselves, that we would perfect ourselves in the fear of the Lord to holiness. And that you would wash us and let your blood flow to every place in Jesus' name. Heal those that are broken, those that don't know if they can love again because of the brokenness, those that don't know if they can trust again because of the hurt. Heal that too. If you need healing like that, the, the stuff nobody knows about, they don't, they don't have to know it. God sees it. Won't you just right now in His presence, just let it go. Surrender it to God. You, I'm talking to somebody today. S- lift up your hands and begin to call for God. You're tormented sometimes. You're ang- you, you got anxiety and anger. It's a silent frustration in your home. You walk around and try to pretend that you have the perfect family. But there's this silent frustration and unhappiness that you face And there's anger, silent anger and quiet frustration will manifest itself. And God can deal with that right now. Just let that go. In His presence, just surrender it to Him. Give it to Jesus today. We all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. We all need His blood. We all need to be washed. We all need to be cleansed. Healing rains falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. 